It's Thursday on your view. Welcome to the show. I am Murayo Afolabi Brown. As always, I have the ladies with me. I have Nima Akashat Zubiri. How you doing? I was telling somebody that you've not gone to high. Like, oh, we must put her name on the list. We must put her name. I just hope I don't miss. They, should, they must put your name on this list. Okay. I don't I'll know where the list is. I don't know I didn't ask, but everyone was like really excited that. Like Barrel Law. We will all I'm celebrate it in the airport. Next year, and I want to celebrate ah, it. Ah, we know. Nice. I'm planning it. That's we have to. We must hit Hajj. Exactly. In fact, that day, me yeah, I know, can you help you with suitcase to the airport? Okay. Oh. <laughs> 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 I want to be inspired by my auntie. Yeah. My auntie turned 50 last year, and was, I was supposed to accompany her on the Hajj mm. instead of a party. Mm. And so I couldn't fulfill my own financial part, although she was subsidizing my rates. And so she had to go on the Umrah this year for her 50th, and she just came back. She was just looking at me like this on my... Don't worry. So, so, yeah, so I am also going to copy the same thing and go on okay. the Hajj. Good to have you on the show. How are you doing, Sokwe? I'm good. I'm going house of BC, nice. and I'm going to sell my kit today. Oh, fantastic. So if you, immediately after the show, you can meet me at home. One... Um, boot shop, shop 12. Boot. Yes, boot 12. Yes. I'm going to be selling market with House of BC, with BC, and I'm wearing an outfit so that we can blend in with all that is there. Yeah. So, pictures, very videos, everything. I love it. It's like, very lovely outfit. You know, it's just meet me yeah. at the trade fair. <laughs> can get TBS. something just like that. Yeah. <laughs> How are you doing, Mariam? I'm fine. I'm I good. like this House of BC. Too. It's really cute. No, this is oh. MM. I'm sure. Ah, at the trade at fair. Also at also well, the trade fair. It's it's a you wore her yesterday, too. Yes, oh, I nice. Uh, so, yeah, but what's my own banter? Hmm. What's going on? You know how you have, you hear sometimes that children take care of parents. Yesterday, my daughter took me to oh. bed, tucked me in bed, locked oh, up after me. I was, I and I was feeling so guilty. I was like, I was so tired. Like, oh. you know, bone crushing tired. Oh. I couldn't even get up from the couch to go upstairs. Oh. But then she, you know, tried to do everything. And I thought, hmm. Such a caring child. I mean, caring. when was she born? And already telling you. signs of being a... Mature. Mature, yeah. Mind. That's fantastic. I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I mean, thank, I mean, the kids are growing so fast. Sometimes, yeah. I, when, I, when I stare at my daughter, I just be staring at her. Mom, why are you staring at me? <laughs> this is my baby. <laughs> <laughs> you don't understand. Just stop. I mean, I'm like, I mean, I I'm staring at her. I'm like, ah, this girl. What's what? I remember the day we're doing naming. I remember when she came out. Ah. Are you not scared that you're losing? You know, when your kids are small, that, that innocence. That, yes. that innocence is what I'm scared of. Eh? <laughs> you know, there are some things they will say. The yes. Yes. Like, you'll be seeing the woman that they're about to become. Exactly. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I was staring at my daughter, I'm like, so my, she was trying to say some things, and I told her, I won't hear anything she's saying, no. I'm just staring at her. Oh, but did you hear anything I said? <laughs> I said, what did you say? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just looking at you, but you want to know what you're thinking. Oh, we thank God, God has been faithful. <laughs> yes. Okay, it's Wednesday, right? Yeah, let's it's Thursday. Yeah. 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 I was still, I was looking at your eyes to give oh, me sorry. the confirmation. She's, I'm already already looking. Okay. She's wearing us of busy. Oh, yeah, thank you. God bless you. So I'm wearing my shorts. I mean, my husband's like, why are you wearing shorts? Like, what are you feeling like? Ah, kind of, you know? Like, I beg. I'm wearing shorts busy. today because I must support House of Busy. So this is House of Busy. Looking, nice, looking for casual stuff, she, she got you covered. So anyway, let's go on a quick break. When we come back, we go through the front pages of the paper. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We're going to start with the nation. Oil thieves threatening my life, says NNPCL GMD. I have fears for my re-election, Bala Mohammed cries out. 2023, Buhari predicts victory for Tinumbu. Why I set my stepchildren ablaze is suspect. 193,000 PVCs yet to be collected in Kwara State. Eight Nigerians win in U.S. midterm polls. Article promises to revive Lake Chad and fight insecurity. Which story are we starting with? Read your headline. Read your headline, please. So, Mele Kiare, the NNPC Gakpatapata, and the, the Gakpatapata of EFCC and that of the ICPC were all at a one-day legislative transparency and accountability summit organized by the House of Reps on anti-corruption, and they were all talking about the oil theft. Um, he said that because of this fight against the oil thieves, he's had his life threatened, and that, you know, he didn't refer in the article to having reported it to any security agency. He, doesn't, he didn't talk about anybody arresting anybody, or any of the you know, blackmailers or those threatening his life. His life. But he, he said, 
he's not bothered about it because you know one day one day anyhow want somebody who will all die one day so he's not really bothered about it he then went on to talk about how the about 700,000 barrels of crude oil that is lost daily is not all stolen he says sometimes oil companies refuse to pump crude into the export line when they discover that that such crude does not get to the export terminal and that you know they're also arresting all um, illegal refineries that they have pipelines from main trunks that have uh, uh, lines to some abandoned platforms that they are also monitoring. They have uh, um, shut down about 295 illegal connections to the pipelines. They've also had um, oil, uh, um, illegal refineries shut down. Um, that they're also doing so much to stem this oil theft that is happening around. But the the Ogakotakota of the ICP, Sibolaji Owasonoye, just leave me. I don't want to be saying chairman DG and be mixing them up. So. He said that we are losing about 60% of our revenue to bad agreements. Mm. And I would have loved details uh -huh. Uh -huh. of those bad agreements. Because, you know, we, the, uh, that deal that the uh, Attorney yeah. General was overseeing for us in the UK, mm -hmm. and several others like that. So I would have loved details, but the report did not, you know. Mm. Um, so our president them. was in London. Oh, yeah. mm. He spoke to them at NTA. To he see had the seen King. The King, King Charles. And he was speaking at the NTA and when he was saying that he wanted, well, the legacy he wanted to leave behind as a president was free and fair election, the coming elections. Um, he's saying that he doesn't want uh, politicians to manipulate and put money, and of course talking about vote buying, he said that um, he was going to ensure that there's no going back on having ensuring that there's a, there's a free and fair election. And he also predicts, when he was asked about does he think his party will re win the elections, he said he was convinced that Ashiwa Jubal Abetunibu will win because of your service, straight to the track record in Lagos State and the fact that he's an experienced politician. And then he also touched on the Naira, um, the, the, the change of Naira that was recently uh, said Naira by the CBN. He said he com he's completely backing up the CBN, that they need to change the, the Naira and they've given enough time to, to December 31st to get Nigerians to bring in all the cash with them into the legal system so we can actually have a proper uh, um, 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 uh, transparency. He says that he believes what the CBN governor said like to curb inflation and reflate the economy. Mm -hmm. And um, he, also say, he, also, he also touched on his um, health. He said, he was asked, are you healthy? He said, I'm a very healthy person. That the reason why I come to London for my medication is because I've been coming to, I've, I've been patronizing this same doctor since 1978. Mm -hmm. And this is where I've been going there for my medical checkups. And I've been, um, so I'm only going there for my regular teeth and eyes. And I've been doing that since 1978. So I'm very healthy. There's nothing wrong with him. So all wow. of you saying that uh, because he's president, he's not going to London to do check on. Mm -hmm. I just answer your question. We don't agree. PVCs, <laughs> though. He, he's, the president has said, and other people have said that he's leg he, the legacy he wants to leave us is free and fair, free and fair election. Well, Quara State's rec is also reiterating oh. that. Oh, and um, the police commissioner for Quara State, Paul Odama, has said that um, people should not feed their supporters hard drugs. That politicians shouldn't feed their supporters hard drugs. Mm. He also mentioned um, the police commissioner for Kwara State mentioned that politics should focus on issue-based campaign mm. and they should not talk about personalities. He said that there was going to be following they will be following the rule of law, no vote buying. The police and other security agencies are going to be on ground. That politicians should ensure that their supporters don't destroy other mm. people's billboards. Mm. and opposition's campaign materials. And yeah. that, that's the, that, okay. that for me was very important. Okay, okay let me take a, uh, this is an update. We remember the story of a <coughs> man who set ablaze five uh, oh, yeah. stepchildren. And um, according to the recent um, update is that two of those children have died. Um, the man who did this, Mr. Joseph Ojo, was being asked why he did it. He said that he has four wives and that it was just this, his particular wife, the last one, that's always giving him issues. He says he has the first wife, he has never strangled her, or the second wife, you know, but this one, that every time he gives her money, she would never buy food in the house or feed him, and she never washes his clothes, they're constantly fighting, and on this particular day, these children beat him up alongside mm. their mother, and so he was so upset, and he set them, uh, set them ablaze. They, their biological father is currently asking for help, for the other children who are still in hospital. He says normally the children will stay with him um, on the days that he doesn't go to the farm. They come to him on Fridays. And on this particular day, he had been called to say that his wife's, his ex-wife's um, husband's house was um, set on fire. Mm. And uh, finally went to the hospital and found that two of his children have passed on and they need help 
with the others who are still in really, hospital. Really, really sad. Moving on quickly now to the punch. Controversy surrounds Atiku convoy attack in Borno. Picture here of uh, Nigerians who won the Nigerian Americans who elected in the U.S. during the midterm elections. Again, kidnappers strike on Lagos about the expressway commuters shot. Car rams Ogun, motorcyclists on one way and six crushed. Why Nigeria can't implement AU free movement, says federal government. 28 killed in the Benue clashes, government demands probe. INEC to sanction 23 workers for illegal registration. I told aggrieved governors my worries, says Bala Mohammed, and Amcon recovers 307 billionaire debt. Stories? Yes, let me take this story. It's a follow up on, it's part of the story that Chocolate um, took earlier. So this is still INEC and the Quora and the <laughs> Quora Resident Electoral Commissioner um, revealed that 23 staff members of the commission have been caught illegally registering voters in Quora State and that um, because, um, to show INEX commitment to free and fair elections, these people would be prosecuted, sanctioned and prosecuted for what they have done. But it also goes on to say that um, the state is um, experiencing poor response to collection of their PVCs. He says that over 233,000 PVCs stand uncollected from 2011 mm. to 2019. He said out of this, only 20,000 have been, only a little above 20,000 have been collected, um, leaving 193,000. And then he also talked about new registrants and also that there's a balance that, have, they ha that haven't been collected up till now. So it's important that people, apart from registering, you have to go and collect it. It's ready to, I mean, for right. them, for Absolutely. those of you that know that it's ready to collect, go and collect yours. <laughs> and I've shared my own story. Yeah. I went there to, call, to pick up mine. I was, they had some issues because they thought maybe I double registered and told me it was cancelled. Then I got a call back later saying that, oh, they actually found out that I was actually transferred. Mm -hmm. They now took my name down and said they would call me. So I'm expecting a call. Please make the effort to go to pick, pick up your pick PVCs. Up. You got to vote. So um, the Lagos Ibadan is now something to worry about. It's becoming a cause of concern. Along the Shagam interchange, there was another attempt to kidnap people returning into Lagos from Ibadan, uh, from Oyo. And these men came out in military camouflage, of course. They attempted to, you know, pick people from the border. Police from uh, one of the police stations along that area were able to follow that attempt at kidnapping. That is commendable. That is the present account of the, uh, of the story. And they don't have any record of anybody injured in that attack. According to the police spokesperson for Ogun State, they don't have any such record of anybody injured in that. But the video showed people breathing in pain, rolling on the floor, and saying they thought their life was at stake. Now, we had a story some weeks back of, you know, the, prof the professor and some students of uh, mm -hmm. Moshida Bella uh, uh, Polytechnic that were also kidnapped. I think it is now high time to have a troll on that road because, you know, we cannot allow that road also to become Kaduna right. <coughs> Road. Okay, let's go on a quick break. When we come back, we continue with our review. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We're still reviewing Punch. Talk about so, story. Go ahead. the Minister for Interior, Raul Farabeshola, has criticized the continent's restriction on movement of goods and people, but he also took the opportunity to explain why Nigeria had to impose, a, still um, imposes a bit of restriction to movement, and he explained that it was because of insecure, the insecurity challenges we're facing. He was playing host to African Union delegation who paid him visits in Abuja, and he mentioned his statement was about the fact that after the crisis that happened in Libya, there's been a lot of proliferation of um, small arms and um, people that with criminal intent, and it has led to higher insecurity within Nigeria. And so the policy on ground is visa on arrival for people within West Africa, and that would continue until there's a bit of sanity in the space. I'm paraphrasing. He said the visa on arrival policy would be expediting movement, and he, he also mentioned that there will be investigation, that the minister would, um, um, the, the leader of the delegation said that they were going to visit 
the Seme border, the Bene Seme border, and that they would give the, the minister information regarding how free movement has been within the area. I support the restriction, but I also know that many criminals don't come in through the legal ways. They will not come mm -hmm. in through the airport or proper um, um, migrating channels. So we might end up hurting legitimate business people from doing transactions with us while the criminals still use their own means of getting into the country and carrying our crime. So we must be more open. Right, so no fewer than eight politicians of Nigerian descent Mm. won their legislative seats on Tuesday night during the uh, midterm elections in Georgia, Pennsylvania, Minnesota. Uh, and, um, and it was quite interesting to get this information from the NITCOM boss, that's the Honorable Chairman of the Commission, Abike W. Erewa, of the Nigerian Diaspora Commission. She was saying via her, her Twitter handle yesterday on Wednesday. So these Nigerian Americans won the elections in Georgia last night. They were Shegu Adeyino. Babwe Okoye, Solomon Adesonya, Chish Nagishe, Phil Olale, Karo Kazim, Oye Owolewa, and Esther Agbaje. And um, we're really proud of them. Of course, when Nigerians do great abroad, we, um, we, we, it's something to be proud of. Of course, our president has also sent his congratulations message, messages to them. And um, it, 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 obviously, someone, I was reading on Twitter the other day, someone said Nigerians are colonizing the world mm. with our music. Mm. With our entertainment, but not and now colonize is not the word. Well, colorizing, maybe. No, they said colonize. Oh, the, the reason why I said use the word colonize is because taken... we are changing. We are, we, are, we are bringing our own culture of entertainment music, and we are getting it to the point where people are now accepting, absorbing it. They are dancing to it, so we are colonizing them in that in that angle. Mm. Now, with our leadership skills, with our ability to lead, hopefully, as we lead the world. We can come back and lead our country at some mm. point. But let me not well, talk about hot topic. Not, we are not colonizing. <laughs> we're influencing. Yeah. Incre color, what's the color? What's, what's color? I don't know. All yeah, I know is that when they are colonizing, <laughs> colonize is negative. <laughs> <laughs> negative. OK, so, so we can choose my word. So let's say we're influencing the world. Yeah. OK, we'll write it down. We'll see. But that was what I saw on Twitter, colonizing. Right. I know. OK, let's um, know we get people. move on quickly to <laughs> Daily Sun. Panic in Meiduguri as gunmen attack Atiku's campaign convoy. Truck drivers block Enugu Port Harcourt Expressway in protest. Wicked Piazo Otom meets Wu Bauchi governor hours after Atiku's visit. Hmm. Your remarks against Fulani heard as unbecoming, hmm. Northern Ellis tells Otom. By also flawed in presence, he says, Minister overwhelmed. Reps query NPC over 1.2 billion naira expenditure for stakeholders. And NPC reforms. My life is being threatened, says Kiari. 2023, over 27 states have successfully taken delivery of beavers, says INEC. 28 killed, others missing in Benue communal clash. I didn't see some. Which state were we taking? Okay, so, um, so uh, the, um, Northern Elders Forum has um, <clears throat> criticized Governor of Benue State, Samuel Autumn, for accusing specifically Fulani headers of killing some villagers in Benue State and also vowing never to support a Fulani president. The group is saying that um, it is unbecoming for a governor to politicize insecurity, that, um, it's, that they, of course, know that um, there's insecurity and things are happening you know, in that area, but to, make it, to, to give it an ethnic coloration mm. is not right. It's pitting um, ethnicities against each other. each other, and that um, for them, even as a group, they are asking that whoever it is that's running for president must tell us what he plans to do um, to fight insecurity and also to help with the constant, you know, politicizing or coloration of a particular ethnic group as, you know, um, bandits and terrorists. He said the, uh, the group is also saying that they acknowledge that there have been some Fulanis that are found as bandits mm. and this, but that does not make the whole um, community or the whole ethnicity bandits and terrorists. So um, the governor, you know, has been sort of advised to check his speech. Right. I, I know there's an update, although I didn't see it in this particular report, where it says that the governor has apologized. So I guess... Okay, okay. I'm let's take okay. I wanted to take the MPC, that's the National Population Commission, mm. appearing before the House of Reps Committee to defend their budget for 2023. And they were made to explain how 1.9 <laughs> billion expended on stakeholder summit across the country was utilized. The budget did not carry that amount of money, and that money has already been expended. Also, they have spent 5.2 billion naira 
spent on mock census state by state. They said the summit was held at the villa and across 36 states in Nigeria, and that those different summits were supposed to be the cost of the 1.9 billion. They are asking them to come and explain and show how this was judicially, judiciously spent or how it was expended. I personally have not been counted for any mock census. I don't know how the mock census was done, but the mock census have already happened according to them in this report. And 5.2 billion was the money marked for it. So the House of Reps, um, um, or the Honorable Trudy yeah. Moma was asking them, you know, for more details on this and asking them to appear before the House Committee. Right. To you need to take it. the river story. Um, um, articulated vehicle drivers have blocked the Aba axis of Enugu Portacot Expressway and they are protesting against the dilapidated nature and alleged extortion by soldiers at checkpoints. Now, I know this because um, my brother in law lives in Portacot and he was supposed to come to Benin and they, could, they, they shifted their trip for a week because the road was blocked. There wasn't, you can't leave by road um, from Portacot. The protesters are saying that the, they are even cooking on the expressway. The roads huh? are bad. They yeah. listed the several roads that are bad. And they said their trucks are stuck on the road. They can't go anywhere. And at night, several soldiers would come and extort a thousand naira from each, each person saying that there is curfew in Abia State. So um, the conversation now is hmm. the soldiers are extorting us. The roads are bad. Our vehicles are getting damaged. And they are asking the government to look into this. That even aside from the military... There are touts that are also doing their own from 9 p.m. And they listed the areas that this happened. Um, you know, this the, is just I'm not a all, but, yes. Because trucks have an association. Association reports to a certain ministry or commission or agency. What have they done? Have you, have you, have you aside they, from, before you got to the point of protesting, yeah, we, there was a breakdown of communication mm, between yes. the truck drivers and the ministry in charge. So somebody should be getting fired at this moment. There's a standstill of 25 kilometers. Yes. Th there's no life. How can and you be in traffic for 25 so kilometers? to us, leadership. Somebody must have we'll somebody wait until things dropped get the very ball. Bad. Because yeah. then they'll just say the government, the government. But somebody between Especially them the and the government didn't do their level. job. Let's move very quickly to Vanguard. Outrage trails attack on Atiku's campaign cover. Who took that? Nobody took I did, that I took okay. that story. Uh, Echo, Echo Nafes elects leaders that can ensure unity, says Samuel Lu. How Undu Amotekun rescued us after four days, says six kidnapped victims. All threats, YNNPC engaged private security contractors, says Kiari. Many injured as gunmen attack commuters on Lagos Ibadan Expressway. Ara Rome drags Buhari to court, demands 100 billion naira over unlawful sack as NNPC chairman. Eight Nigerian Americans emerge victorious in U.S. midterm elections. And Northern elders tackle or Tom over the anti Fulani comments as governor apologizes. Okay, which story? Let's yeah, take the so, major so headline. I'm, I'm, I'm taking this story from my degree, um, Burno State. So the presidential candidate for the PDP, Alaji Atiku Abubakar, his convoy and his supporters were attacked yesterday by uh, hoodlums. Uh, they say that um, 174 of their supporters were injured and over 100 vehicles were vandalized. And he's accusing the APC and also, you know, for staging these attacks. He says that this is something that happens to them every time in these um, areas. They had just left the Palace of the Shia of Brno to Ramat Square. That's a venue for where they're supposed to hold the presidential rally when these attacks happen. Although we have um, a response from the police, the state police has debunked the attack and saying that the police, police was, provide, um, was provided to give security for the campaign convoy and also peace was ensured throughout the campaign. I guess we would... Get, but there are pictures. I mean, if we look at yeah. it, there are pictures to show that this happened. So I wonder exactly what the witness account to say that you was know, there was no gunman attack. The witness we have to run. Us. That's all we can take on front page review. When we come back, we're bringing our guest from iCreate. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. Founded in 2013. Mm. Hey, welcome to the show, my little man. We have with us today Chinon So, who is going to be telling us about 
the I Create Project. Tell us. Mm. Okay. Welcome to the show, my dear. Go ahead. Tell us your Hello, Tino. So tell Hello, us your name. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Tino Su Bona. I'm 10 years old. I'm in primary four. I'm in primary four. And the name of my school is Step My School in Peters Estate. The teacher beside me, her name is Miss Lavenda. Oh. So before speaking with you, let us watch a bit. The video um, tells about your own story with I Create. Let's watch this. Now that was touching. How does it feel seeing your father speak so proudly of you? He's been called the champion's father. I feel glad and I'm happy. <laughs> so, really? You know, yes. so, see, I'm just watching that video and I'm impressed. All these amazing things that you're doing. I hear you brought some pictures for us. Would you like to show us? Yes, ma'am. Okay, but before you show those pictures, I hear that you also spoke to the governor, Sonwelu. Tell us about that, uh, about the drawings. One, I did it. One, I did it myself. Oh, you drew that? <gasps> oh my goodness, he see it. I hope he's watching. Has governor seen it? And the second one, I create love to teach me on that way. Nice. Oh. You drew this? Yes. Yes. How old are you, Chino? So just check it. How old are you? I'm um, 10 years old. Oh, my Lord. You made that. Oh, yeah. You know, so I saw in the video, I saw that you did some, you know, some creation with cartons and, you know, the, you had a propeller fan on it and all of that. Tell us about, you know, that part of your uh, creativity. One, that is the, my, my creativity. My best job is artist and engineer. I also mm -hmm. connect like that mm -hmm. sport too. Oh, okay. well, how did you get interested in drawings? I got interested in drawing because I saw him on drawing and painting. When I get when I I watch him for a long time. When I get to him, I started practicing. Good. I love that you know you know um, you also are interested in engineering. Is there a possibility that you know which one of them would you prefer the most? Uh, artwork or uh, being an engineer. At work. <laughs> yeah. But you'd like to connect wires to, I think you can be anything you want to be. It can yeah. be art and it can be it engineering. Can be both and of them. Come up yes. with something new. <laughs> Let's ask the mm. teacher. So tell us about Tinoza's growth. Yes. Um, as a school, we always encourage the children. So when we saw um, Chino, so we knew that so many children, they are different. Different strengths, different talents, different interests. So Chin also's interest in us, we encouraged him. And then we also spoke to the dad that he should always, always encourage him. Now, um, not um, like for him now, he's good in drawing than painting. Mm -hmm. So when we saw that this competition was is more of painting. So we worked with him and then we tried and prepared him for this competition and we're very happy when he came in second because he really, really, really pushed. We always used to encourage them to push out of their comfort zone. Mm. And him being a, more of drawing than painting, he actually took up that challenge. Mm. And then he pushed with the help of I Create Club. They came, they brought up this um, work with the children. Mm. They had some activities with them. And he emerged the one to represent the school. Wow. Because of his artistic um, interest like that. So he, he, we were happy. We were actually very, very happy when he went and he came home with the second um, position. So how did you feel when you got that? I feel second. bad and sad right. when I got second first. and start crying. My dad, second, yeah. my dad told me I should not cry. That I'm still a winner. Then I stopped crying. Oh, <laughs> second is just as good. Second is as so good as me. I like surprises, and I heard you came with surprise for us today. Mm -hmm. What's the surprise? What's the surprise? <laughs> yes. worked. Now, um, Chino, so most of his drawings were on men. Okay. So the I Create Club wanted to see more of him. So they challenged him into doing something different. So he came up with um, a picture of a woman okay. of which we are going to present here. Okay. Probably at the end of 
Oh, we are back up. We're already on the end. We're already ready. So, but tell us, so, so, I mean, <laughs> Vital Home obviously has really supported this. What, what do you have to say concerning Yes. This? Now, we cannot overemphasize what Vital Home and I Create Club have done for these children, especially for Obona, for OEM Chino. So, they've done so much. So we say a very big thank you to I Create Club for coming to our school, do a public school. They still came and they brought up the light in them. And ever since then, the children in the school, everybody wants to draw. Everybody <laughs> wants to paint. See? Because they say, ah, this is really nice. So we thank them all. We thank them in Vital Form as well. And then finally, I am a federal teacher. And I want to say thank you for giving me this platform or this grace to work with this very um, talented child for these two years. Our program will be over by this November, and we say thank you right. for the grace, the opportunity to work with them. And know, so tell me about this. I mean, you, you, you see, are, are you nervous? Are you scared? I want to see. Oh, you're not scared. Wow. I like that. So finally, I mean, what, 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 what who, who's, whose picture is on the surprise? So I want you to introduce the you picture. Introduce me. Tell us. Okay. Chino, so he made a picture of a woman for the very first time. Okay, go ahead. Ah. And he's going to make the presentation <laughs> now. Thank you so much. That Thank is so beautiful. Oh, I'm so so It's really good to see you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. this. Is the first woman. So I have, it's on record. Yeah, the very first the one. Very first. Know, so first. Yeah. Mariah Afolabi of TBC, your view. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you for that. If you, you will sign up, Ewa Chino. So that's your other Whoa. name? Ewa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. it's his middle name. It's his middle name. Fantastic. Any final words? You want to say thank you to Vital Form and I Create? Say something to them. They're watching you right now. I want to say thank you, Vita, for, for sponsoring my Create Club and for doing a lot of things for us and giving us bed, pillow, and drawing materials. Wow. Fantastic. Any other thing? Your and thank, thank you for I Create Club for doing do, my t shirts okay. and that way to okay. draw again. Oh, okay. nice. Okay. So, who's the next person you're going to be drawing? I'm going to. You can talk to the camera right there, number three. Oh. Who, are you, who, are you, who are you drawing next? I'm going to draw another picture like her again. So, oh, do you have somebody in mind? Your mom? Is there any person you, you want to draw? draw? Is there any person that you, you have know? in mind? Yes, and who? the person is woman. Who is the person? The same. Oh, me again. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. We can take thank you so much. Thank you, so you don't want to draw me. Me, you don't want to. Now I'm jealous. Me, I'm jealous. Are we not? Yeah, there are six of us. We better choose one more than me. There are six ladies. Well done, well done. Smile for me. Smile now. You're going to laugh again. Okay, good to have you on the show. It was a pleasure. We hope to see more drawings of you in future. And well done to I Create. I mean, they've been so amazing. Um, um, with um, Vital Form, thank you for the support of these kids. And it's been, we've been doing this for a few weeks now, and we've seen so many talented children mm -hmm. come, on, come on the show to tell us how I create and impacted their lives. We're so grateful to Vital Form for sponsoring and seeing the importance of helping children develop their creativity. That's all we can take on this segment. When we come back, move on to another segment. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Staying with us, founded in 2013, Infinix Mobile aims to make lives of its users more pleasurable and convenient with smart devices that have the technology and innovative design to meet their specific pain points. This message was further amplified with the launch of their latest flagship devices, the Zero Series. The Zero Series portfolio consisting of the flagship Zero Ultra and Zero 20 smartphones. Its newest smartphone portfolio is suggested to bring a new premium experience to its users. And we have with us the Marketing, Communication, and Public Relations Manager, Infinix, Mr. Kevin Olumese. Welcome to the show. 
Thank you very much. Good to have you on. Very so nice tell us about this ultra, this zero ultra standout from all, how why it stands out from other phones. Um, we call this our flagship phones. The Zero series, series are flagship phones, and the reason why it's our flagship is because um, it's our most impressive, almost most leading um, leading products. Um, they, they have a lot of industry firsts mm. with the Zero Ultra and the Zero Twenty. For instance, the Zero Twenty has the highest um, selfie camera, the 60 MP selfie camera, and the Zero Ultra has a 180 watt fast charge and a 200 MP um, back camera, which is also an industry first as well. So, what makes the Zero Ultra unique? as compared to the others? Um, the Zero Ultra, like I said, the Zero Ultra is the industry first 180 watt fast charge. It goes from zero to 100 in just less than 15 seconds. So your phone is totally dead on zero. It goes from zero to 100% in less than 15 yes. seconds. Wow. Yes. So who would you say you're targeting with this Infinite uh, Ultra Force release now? Who would your audience be? Um, first of all, the, the two phones have different audience. Um, the 60 MP selfie camera of the 020 is targeted to content creators. Um, if you create content, uh, something you do a lot of, that is what you should be doing, using it for. Um, if you're going on TikTok, if you, if you have um, viral videos you want to create, this is something that you can use for vlogging as well. It's very efficient for vlogging. Um, the Zero Ultra itself, if, you, if the Zero 020 is amazing, Zero Ultra is even better because Zero Ultra has a 180 watt fast charge, which as we said, goes from zero to 100 in less than 15 minutes. Also has a 200 MP back camera, which is great for like uh, tech bros, your um, entrepreneurs, you're always in airport, you're always jumping from meetings to meetings, you need to charge your phone as quick as possible. That is actually one of the best phones that you can use. Hmm. The way you're calling it is safe, <laughs> sounding like money. So how much exactly uh, is this exactly. Zero Ultra and Zero Twenty? Because that's the cook of the matter. Yes, yes, yes. Well, mm -hmm. these are, like we said, it's a flagship from Infinix, so they are big for big boys and big girls, mm -hmm. we say. Um, the Zero Twenty is um, 247,300 Naira. Yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> the Zero Ultra, which is actually higher than that, and one of our best phones out yet, is 446,900 Naira. Oh, yeah. Ooh, wow. Just for those awesome specs in the devices. So, uh, well, uh, let me just ask how we can get it. Because this price is, um, yeah. it's, is this a price anybody can buy it outside? Or price. there's a specific place where you can buy it at this price? Um, normally, these phones are usually with our only our authorized retailers or on our authorized um, online store, which is ng.xpark.com. These are the places you're sure to get authentic quality of this phone. There might be um, mm -hmm. other variants out there, but these are the places that you can get authentic know, versions. Okay, you know with phones, it's about content creators and people that are tech lovers. Do you have yeah. any juicy packages to sort of entice them to get the Infinix? Yeah, actually, like, Infinix is all about giving back to our customers. So, for the two phones, we have different packages on. For instance, um, for the Zero Twenty, we have a competition going on for content creators and tech lovers. So, um, if you're a content creator or you're a vlogger, you can use, it, use your selfie camera to create a video and create your content in any field and you could be one of our winners in our weekly promotion to win a 020 phone. So we see your phone, we see, okay, maybe you need a better phone, we give you a, a 020 to actually do your thing. Um, there is also, there is also a, there's also a sales promotion for 020, which we call Explore Qatar. It's on right now. Mm. So we are taking to, um, one person that buys the 020 to Qatar to experience the World Cup. Um, oh, obviously, wow. the promo is going to end soon. The World Cup is about to start. Mm -hmm. um, we are looking at end of this month, selecting the winner. So it's going to be something big for us. So zero twenty buyers have something to expect. They might be going to Qatar. One of them is going to Qatar at the end of this month. Also, um, for zero for zero ultra, um, we have a special we have a, a, a special offer we have for it. It's called we call it NF, Infinix NFTs. Okay. Infinix NFTs are a special offer that we, mm. we plan to give everybody that buys Zero Ultra. We know they're tech bros, they're tech enthusiasts, and it's one way Infinix is trying to set new trends. So with the NFTs, the NFTs actually, let me just break it down for you. Mm. We have five mm -hmm. NFTs for the Zero Ultra. Okay. And we, do we know what NFTs are yeah? Mm. NFTs are like cryptocurrency where you can own and earn a value for it in the future or in the present. So these NFTs signify the five um, characteristics or the five selling points of the Zero Ultra. We have the Flash NFT, which is very rare and very few people are going to own. Even everybody that buys the phone is not going to own that. Mm. It signifies the 180 watt fast charge of the Infinix Zero Ultra. Goes from zero to 115 in less than 15 minutes. Um, we have the Vision NFT, which is, signifies the 200 MP back camera of the Zero Ultra. You can take clear images like the Vision. We have the Flash NFT, 
which um, we have, sorry, we have the mirror NFT, which shows the um, water drop display screen, the slick and smooth screen of the device. Um, we also have the Y-Star NFT, which talks about the MediaTek 920 Dimensity processor, which also makes the device run smoothly, no lags, no jets. Then we have the Chick NFT, which is, signifies the flashy design, the flashy case. Is this what the phone looks like? Yes, this is actually the Infinix Zero Ultra, which oh. you can see in my hand right now. So. Best. Oh, this is okay. the back, this is the front. Is there a very swap sleek, very cheap. opportunity for somebody using an Infinix? I, I use an Infinix. Um, right now, we don't have swap opportunities, mm -hmm. but we have what you call um, easy buy, which means you can buy and pay like instantly. Oh, yeah. So, mentally, yeah. So, please just go back to the NFT question. You, okay. you said that the NFT is, is, is it that once you buy the phone, you get a token free? Okay, or? so because the NFTs are super rare, not everybody that buys the phone can get it. We give, we've given special celebrities, special NFT enthusiasts, and special media houses. But everybody that buys the phone enters a draw to win some specific NFTs. Oh, so okay. you might buy and you might get a chick. Mm. She might buy and she may get a flash. Mm -hmm. Her flash has more value than and the chick. chick. Okay. And just like that. But this of, this, all this value is going to be communicated in the future. As you hold your NFT, it continues to grow in value mm. and it continues to grow okay. in... We have to wrap up with you, but I know that... You said a lot of things. If you give us so much information, and the average Nigerian there is thinking, okay, I got so much information, it's hard to stick it. But the basic, the, the, the easiest information to Nigerians, does it have good camera? Yes. And I record. <laughs> does it charge fast? Does it charge fast? Yeah. No, so yeah. let me break it down in two seconds. Like those things you said, mm. put it in five bullet points so that Nigerians yeah. can go home with that to remember, yes, this Infinix has these things. Yes. Number yes. one. Okay. Number one, obviously, zero to 100 charging in 15 seconds. 15 seconds. In 15 Fantastic. minutes, sorry. 15 minutes, sorry. Yes. Fantastic. So, number two, it has a 200 MP back camera, which is the highest in the world. Okay, and so the camera will be sharp. Yes, back very, camera. Very good. Awesome. Yeah. For the Zero Ultra. For the Zero wow. 20, we also have the 60 MP front camera, which is highest in the world as well. Oh. And we have the 180 MP back camera for the yeah. Zero 20. Um, but we have, aside from all this I've said, there are special promos right now that you can use to buy all these devices. Oh. Mm. I wanted to just tell Nigerians about it. We have a live sales coming up on the 16th. Live sale. Live sale. It's going to be happening live on our Instagram page at wow. Infinix Nigeria oh. on the 16th of November. That's oh. next week, Wednesday. Oh. And basically, we're going to be going all out for our customers. Um, we're going to be selling phones for as low as 100 naira. You're kidding what? me. Yes, 100 <laughs> Please, what time does this start? Infinix Nigeria starts at 12 p.m. <laughs> yeah, okay. next Wednesday, Wednesday 16th. Uh -huh, now you're speaking our English. Is it the yes. first offer, sir? Well, <laughs> it's going to be first come. There are different phones. There's 100 naira, there's 1,000 naira, there's 2,000 naira. So people what are going to be big ones. They're not part of it. Though. They're part of it. There's hey. actually a big one released this year that's going for something oh, fantastic. around that. We'll be there. So 16th. <laughs> I'll be there. Instagram. 12 noon. Yeah, 12 noon, 16th. Um, Notifications 16th. on. Yes, <laughs> Instagram, Infinix Nigeria. Then we're also going to have Black Friday sales at the end of the month as well, okay. which is also going to cover most of all this that has happened. We're also going to select the winner of the Qatar trip as well. So if you mm. buy on the 16th, you enter the draw. Oh, you can be a winner the on Qatar. the Black Friday Qatar draw. Okay. Um, then as well, we have a lot of end-of-life phones that were actually going up for, for sale as well around this period. So just end of life? End of life means like um, a phone that was released maybe last year or two years ago. We just want to say, okay, yeah. So we want to give it out to people that actually want to buy them before yeah. they actually stop. We stop selling them. Oh. So it's like if you don't buy it now, you can never buy the phone again. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. So well done. Thank well done. you. We'll look Thank you. To Thank next week Wednesday, 12 right. p.m. Next week Wednesday, 12 p.m. Nigeria. Yes. <laughs> 100 naira kids. It's going hey, live. Be there. Be there. We're going to buy. It's station <laughs> bell. That's all we can take on this segment. We'll come back and go to our gist for today. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So we, we, went, we saw a tweet that was interesting to us because it brings us to a different conversation about those of us who come back home or who live abroad. So there was a tweet uh, by, I think it was General underscore Oluchi that said that, I traveled from the US to Lagos, took a flight from Lagos to the east, mm -hmm. and hired a taxi from the airport to my hometown. And the first question a relative greeted me with was, this one that you return to the middle, in the middle of the year, hope, there's, hope you are well. You should have just sent the money. So according to this um, person, they came home for a funeral, maybe to show the last respects to a loved one. 
and they spent quite a bit of money to buy tickets, Lagos, Lagos to the, to the States from there, take a taxi, and they spent quite a bit of money. And the relatives, they said, you didn't have to come, just send the money. It is the money we need. Hmm. Now, this brings to the fore a conversation on what are, what, how we value lives, number one, and the perception we have of those who live abroad that, as if they went there to pick money from the ground. We've also had stories of family members who travel, and the moment they travel, their loved ones believe that, ah, everything is sorted in our family. All the poverty in our world, all the problem with our life has been erased because that person has crossed over from Rita Mohammed to anywhere. Doesn't even care where the person is, the place is like. As long as you left Nigeria, our life family has changed. It's important to have these conversations because our objective of this show is really to reorientate people, to educate people, to give them information and have options and see things from different perspectives. What are your thoughts on this? How do we change the way we see those who live abroad and where we see those who want to go abroad? What are your thoughts? You can call us on 081 270 You can also tweet to us at TVC Connect, this hashtag your view TVC so we can read your tweets. Let me start with you, Nima, because sometimes if, you're, if, you, if you come home like that and you are coming from abroad and you're, so, you're valuing family, you miss your loved ones, you want to go and see your aunties, your uncles, you're bringing so much expectations and they see you like, ah, auntie, you should have brought the money. Oh. This one, that, that money we used to buy tickets, hmm. is your money we need, though. Hmm. Does not, is that not an indictment also on our government? Let's not even go as far as government, but that's also an indictment on the economy, don't you think? Let's, let's, no, let's, where, where is this let's take different economy? angles. Why is this economy problem not in the world now? Like if we are not deceiving ourselves. Mm. Somebody did the total amount of uh, how much you need to foil your car in, in Ghana, and it was 75,000 naira. To do what? To foil your car. <laughs> uh -huh. Yo, so there's no way this thing not the. The problem for me is I blame the people who sell the greener pasture story. <laughs> All the time. When I was a child, you know what we call Lagos in my place? Ewo. That's the, the, the uh, privileged or exposed place. People at home will think that when you go to Lagos, you don't work because you don't do the kind of work they do. So they think that they're lesser because they're farmers. But if everybody knows that there's dignity in every kind of work that yeah. they do, work that work. Some people can be in Lagos here, they are working to their death. Of course. Mm. Stuck in traffic and all of that. It's the same die. mentality. Somebody goes abroad and you give the impression that we're migrating for better things. Not that they ah, no, if you just go there on the streets, you pick money. As in, when, when I want to, it's coming home, you will not dress on Bulo. Mm -hmm. put, the, put the pendant, it will be like star, hijab. You give them, give them, give them. You see some people who are in Lagos here, when they work for a full year, they save a full year savings. When they're traveling for December, yeah, actually going to this, they will blow bags of. You know, that's a year's work. But when you get home, you give them the pressure, that's every day. Mm. Mm. So they will uh, we'll just go and be working the money and come. Don't even come again. Just send them. You know, people now forget the values of family. You don't want to see your loved one forever. Mm. Make it just the same money. So the value of your relationship is about the money they give you. So I don't mind that. I even call her the other day, safe. She never even pick. And it's, uh, you, you think that that person's problem stops just because you have your own. Mm. We are all human and we lost so much and important values. Everywhere. Who is this greener pasture thing? Everywhere in your holy, we like it, Yemaba. Everybody is dealing with one thing or the other. Mm. We all have our own. Mm. And so if somebody gives you or somebody takes their time to even remember you, it's the gesture itself that matters. The time that the person takes to remove something and give you is the gifting, the love, not the ah, just go and bring money, it's money, I have problem. Don't For understand. Me, this says a lot about relationships and how we value them or don't value them anymore. <clears throat> so this is not only a coming from abroad story. Yeah. Even within Nigeria, you find some people, someone is sick at home and the person is thinking, and they'll say, instead of putting money to get, into the, get on a bus and come all the way, just send that money instead. Yeah. It will go a long way. So I've seen situations where a person will decide, see, all I have is the money for transportation to take me there and come back. And if I put this, and when I get there, I won't be able to give them anything. I can only be there, you know, with them. Is that enough? And I find people have that conversation where they're trying to deal with it. Is it better for me to go and see my sick mom or just send her money towards the hospital bill? So that won't happen. But there's others where you would expect that, see, it's not about the money. I just want to see you. I want to feel you. And that is 
it also brings me to the sort of sacrifices people make and how we, you know, we make nonsense of it. She came. She didn't even drop anything. Meanwhile, mm. this one sent us money. That one did not show up. But this one has been there from the beginning of your yeah, issues, obviously. helping you, you know, being a moral support. Yes, the person doesn't have all the money, money in the world or any money at all, but the person is there with you when you wake up, when you go to bed, when you're feeling down, the person, you, you need to speak to, the, uh, to someone, the person is there listening. But when they are discussing it, they will talk about how you were there, you did not put any money down. But the one that did not show up, sense money. So I'm not making good. So I'm not even making I'm not even making it like maybe the sending money is less yeah. of importance than the person who is there. I'm just saying that for whatever you receive, be grateful for it. And relationships are important. And when you have people that can show up for you, when they have nothing, be very grateful. Absolutely. Yes. I think I think that's really the crux of this conversation <clears> because <throat> there's one thing to send money when you know that if you look at it, if I'm gonna spend almost ten thousand dollars and the come cost to Nigeria. Of what you're trying to do. And if you have to look at it vis-a-vis -vis what that ten thousand dollars would do in Nigeria, mm -hmm. that, 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 that's a plausible reason mm -hmm. to say, you know what, don't let me bother. But sometimes relationships are more costlier because your mother has not seen you in fifteen years, yes. and she feels it's the last moment. So that ten thousand dollars for her is nothing hmm. compared, compared to, to your presence. So you have to weigh the options. It's also let not... it be your decision. Let it not be a relative saying, "Why are you come, sir?" Or send me. And you are not entitled that's, to that. That is self entitlement. That is disrespectful. That is so monetary a value. That's, that's no relationship. That what your thoughts on this? I was going to say <laughs> that. Um, we have commercialized relationships mm. and we have believed we, we have come to a place where every relationship has an economic value and we look at human beings and we're seeing money as opposed to seeing the human being that they represent seeing their emotions feeling the love from them getting the concern from them but we have turned human beings to the economic value they are bringing to the table yeah. commercializing every relationship I also see, ex I see um, what we call, ex no, it's not extortion, it is entitlement mentality from many people. So I have five children. One will become a doctor, you go and work in Canada. One will become a lawyer, you go and work in America. Another one will go to Australia. By the time you are repatriating ABCD for me, I'm sorted. Like, these are not human beings anymore. They are commercial financial commodities. investments, commodities, and it is extremely wrong. You should not plan your life around another person's pocket, and you should not plan your future on another human being. When we say that somebody should not come and they should send money, it's because you feel like their money is more important than their presence. I, we, we, this thing happens in smaller ways within the Yoruba setting, where we are doing a party, and all the housewives, some housewives will come, they will clean the house, they would cook. Then one madam will now come with handbag. She will say, oh, I sent money a week ago. So she does not do anything in the house. Yeah. And everybody will <laughs> sit her on a pedestal and everybody will be serving her. It's like she's Russia. more important than those that have been working. Oh, it, is the, it is the idea idea of commercialization of human beings. It's the idea of parenting the money you bring to the table more than what you, who you are. Now, when we talk about family, because okay. here we're talking we about parents. You, we let let's break it. Let's let break it. I, I will come back to you, because mm. you, you said some important things that we have to, dis ah, totally, we'll have to separate, we have to separate it. it. Let's go on a break. We'll be right back. Distinguish it. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. All right, so, so this hour just has somewhat migrated to a different pedestal, where we're talking about when we send money home. So those of us living in Nigeria, there's some of us that will say, ah, you're doing something, you take this amount of money, do it. Others will go there early in the morning, they are there, sit that they leave their own work, stay with the family, eat, clean, help them do everything, do be there to console, you know. And there are different parts of it. There's a good part of that. The flip side of that is that those who are doing, hey, Akpelema, they are also looking at what they can also pick from this house when they are leaving. Because some mm -hmm. of them are also, ah, okay, one person will drop here, somebody will drop this way. But you know, because I know how it is where, you have family comes like that, and everybody is seeking an opportunity. What can I grab when this whole thing is over? And when they're leaving, they will go with their own takeaway. <laughs> for you that just sent money, you come there, you go for the event, you still you greet people, but you're not there to come and participate in what's going on. You've already sent the money. Mm. So there are different, there's a, there's a, there's a pros and cons mm. on both areas. So Top Topoy had just said, you know, instead of coming to join in the housework, the, the yes. work itself, you send money and then say you come, come and sit like this. 
You say like that because I've sent money to Be, work. Because I have sent money. No, when you send money, yeah. what did you send the money for? Yeah, they because do it. Let's talk from experience. No, it's their choice to use the no, money for whatever no. they use that for. I'm not coming you see this family thing that is cut out for women. We are going communal now. Let's talk. Let's talk, talk, hey, let's talk communal. Yeah. Women are expected to be the one to come and kill the cow, cook the cow. We That's not true. You're not in this. Not, not in this too. Wait. So what you do? You send your money. Exactly. You get your cooks, you get your caterers, Simple. you send your money message. Yes. So that's the difference. So not everybody that send money and come and sit down like this that they didn't do something. Mm -hmm. What exactly did you send your money for? Mm -hmm. So I cannot come and send my money for caterers and then they are still judging me. I should come and put my hand. When I have already done not. my nails, <laughs> I'm I, I, I just want to sit pretty and enjoy exactly. the Exactly. Uh, but why do people start sending money? I people start sending money because they because realize that their efforts, you. their efforts wasn't appreciated. Thank and you. those, the few that were able to send money got a lot more appreciated. So the also was let me make money because so I'll be respected. Everybody is commercializing so is relationship. It's a cycle. Yes, I would not see it. I see it a bit differently. Okay. I see it a bit differently. There used to be a time where, as you said, communally would stay together. The men would go off to work, so mm. they were the ones that would send the money, and the women were at home anyway, yeah. and they mm. could do that. But then we started having women that were married out of the communities, and they were working in 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 the town, and mm -hmm. could not be there physically, or could not travel, mm -hmm. or they had just a day or a few hours before the event would start. And they would send mm -hmm. their money in preparation, you know, ahead. And it's to show that even though I'm not there with you, support. this is my support. So for me, the conversation is not who brought money and who is working, it's that you should appreciate whatever kind because of support anybody yes. brings. And you're not entitled to people's choices. You don't determine for them and say, definitely you must do it this way. Because what you do is you force people who do not have the money to look for this money anyhow. anyhow. And then you force people who um, really cannot See, if you put me in those community houses where they are carrying pound yam, they will divorce me many times over. I can't do all those sort of things, you know. From morning to night, you have woken up in the first in the morning, you have put a big pot of and fire. You don't know what the, you're you are putting the of. firewood. <laughs> I, I won't be able to but do that. You don't know what I will do. Wait, yeah, no, but I will do other things. And yeah. I can be appreciated let for me, the things that poke, I can do. Let me poke that a bit. Mm. Because sometimes we watch these movies like Big, big Mama's House, so yeah. we have families where black communities are coming together and they appreciate African culture because mm -hmm. we seem to be more communal. Mm -hmm. So are we going to throw that community, that communal relationship away because now we're working in the cities, we can't be there. I mean, I, I want us to see if we can bring back mm. where... Okay, I live in the city, but you know what? Something's happened at home, and this is my family. I will live a few days. I will come. I might still send money, but I will come and stay and be there. Can we begin to put value on your presence now than sending money and just come on that but day? And we just the, but we do but that. But sometimes we don't. No, well, at Christmas, we know the person that makes the best salad. You know you're the one making the potato salad. Even though the person has sent money ahead, but the person would come with potato salad. You know the one that does the best fried rice in this family? Please, mm. you cannot, you know? Mm. So we, uh, we still do it, but we are aware that Things have changed. We're not all living in, a, in the same compound, in the yeah. same community. Lives have changed. Time so is better punish. spent, you know, doing mm -hmm. things differently. And so we should acknowledge the differences and appreciate right. what these differences has, you know, made us to resort right. to. Something funny is happening. Like, on Sunday, my sister called and said my mom was asking to see everybody. And so because we are in uh, 2022, we are past COVID, we went on the video call. She set up a Zoom. You see? To see everybody. And so she could see everybody. Our younger sister taking care of everybody. All of us were on the Zoom. My mother said, is this, is this what I talked to you about? I want every one of you, a stupid one of us, me. Mommy, what is the problem? If, let's just know what we're putting. If it's money, let's just put it together and send it. Mm. I don't have time. I said, on Saturday, <laughs> I want to see each and every one of you. I don't care what They're you five have. Five girls, right? Four girls. Four girls. One boy. Every one of you. So I said again, Okay, this meeting that is so important so that we can finish it on time. Let nobody bring their children. We don't want to see any grandchildren. Say, Nima, you don't have the right <laughs> to tell me. I want to see every one of you. Yeah. End of story. So this Saturday, I know that I no cannot achieve how busy anything you are. on my own. So, it goes back to that community. so we shared it. I said to my other sister, okay, since our younger one cooks my mom, mother's kind of diet, she's on a diet, so she can't eat everything. You make this rice. You make what you we we shared what we used to yeah. what we used to be our best things and that's what we'll be doing. So my question weekend. is that this communal thing we have to bring it down closer to like siblings. It's easier to do mm -hmm. when it comes to grandmas, aunties, yeah, well, those kind of things. That's where well, there's problems mm -hmm. because oh, wives now say, ah, no me, I can't go. I'm working. You, yeah, your cousin, you're far away, but you're the rich cousin. You know, mm -hmm. so maybe we not we start bringing these things closer. Maybe, we, maybe mm -hmm. because I, I'm trying to see how we can bring back. 
that connectivity that we've lost I, I think because of um, I, I think at the bottom of it is, is, is to genuinely love the person that is you're around. Mm, you know, that's it. Like, I, do I genuinely love this person? And if it is from a place of love, genuine love, not the one that has other, other is hiding many other things, but, but let me pause it will be a different relationship. Wait, 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 let me pause it. So, you are in America. Mm. You genuinely love yes, this then. woman, mm -hmm. right? She means she's a grandmother you love so much. And then you know that they need $10,000. Mm. Mm. And mm. but you have this $10,000, you have What's two choices. Should I buy tickets, pay all the round tripping and go to Nigeria? Or do I say this ten thousand dollars? Somebody I love genuinely. That's the questions they are. Is having. Is, no, but is, is, is other love is about power, prioritizing. If for you at that point in time they, they need the money more than your presence, you will make the sacrifice of the money. But if you understand that I might never see my grandmother again, and I know you really need the money, I will find a way to get as cheap as I can, drop a little money, and let them know that. See, I want to see you. I feel that sometimes we feel like money is. Money will solve the problems in this world. It doesn't necessarily Same medical do bills. that. Mm. Yes. If a man needed a medical bill paid. And they might pay the medical presence, bills and grandma will still die. Sure. People, they pay, they pay the bills and the person, the person still dies. Still die. The person thing. will still die. So what's the use? Why don't you be there and say, this is your last few moments. Whether you pay it or not, you will still go. And that for me is really, really important. When we talk about um, um, sending money, I, there was a wedding. And it's, it's an excuse that we give because we feel like, and I'm in that excuse space too. Somebody wants to get married in Akure, I cannot go. How much is ticket? 100,000 naira. Okay, I'll do 50K at least. My absent my money to represent me. But what the person actually wanted was, don't use flights. If you call public transport is like 25,000 naira. All of you should show up. Let me see every of my friends. All of you, as I'm dancing to the, my husband, people, they, they see people around me. That was what they wanted. They did not want the money. Yes, they appreciate the money. It would go a long way. But she didn't have the friends. Everybody is sending 20K. So she wants to dance to see her husband. And there's nobody around her to yeah. dance with her. Because we all feel like, let me send my money ahead. Okay. There are places where a human being is needed, you know, and like sometimes the people abroad need this human connection. Mm. They work so hard 24-7. When they are in Nigeria, it's the only time they can hug, they can gist, mm -hmm. they can relax. Mm -hmm. And then you want to take that away from them again because they should send the dollar. Mm, I like that. Let me take Joshua. Good morning, Joshua. Are you there? Good morning, Maria. You're live. Morning. Go ahead, please. Yes. Yeah. I am trying to explain how to wait. Uh, this, uh, this topic today reminds me of when you guys were discussing about this um, valuing the intangible friendship mm. a couple of months ago. Mm. Valuing what? Intangible. The uh, intangible okay. in relationship. Yes. Yeah. It, it reminds me of that. You know, in Africa, we have this sense of entitlement and it's eating us too much. If somebody is trying to show love by coming to cheer you up with his presence. I think there has to be a special attachment to that thing, a special body, because most people will create that to you, no matter how close they are to you. Let us have taught us a lot of lessons. People no longer have this. They just enjoy their weekend themselves. So when somebody comes, you look at what it costs the person to come see you. Mm -hmm. You understand? Then on the other way, if the person has valued, I mean, he has weighed the two options. What am I going to do? If what I'm going to do requires money, and my presence is also important, I can do part of that money to make it easy for them. Mm -hmm. You understand? Like, something happened to my uncle recently. My uncle is somebody that is not too rich, but if his youngest nephew is doing something, he will have to go from Kaduna. He must make sure his presence is there. He loves the father in law. I couldn't go, but my mom was there. So we the brother. Thank you very much, mother. Joshua. So I think this is bringing us back to the. I like, I like, I like where this is taking us. Because we must remind ourselves the importance of relationships. Yeah. And because we've commercialized a lot of things, mm. we, we, there's always the first thing in our mind is that same money. Mm. But let us use this conversation to remind us that our presence and many of these invitations are is more important. You can still bring a little money, right. but you being there, obviously, is more important as an African to our family members. It's sad when you're the only relative and your relatives have become strangers. Mm. Mm. You know, Topper was talking about um, the abroad person want, coming so home hard. to hug. You know, the people at home. And then, he's, what's, what is worse is that when you now come home, the people you left for have gifts. outgrown you. Mm. Mm. Life has happened. They become strangers. Mm. You know, your, 
the place where you used to feel safest is yeah. no longer your safest place. Mm. You're looking at those people around and you're wondering, ah, was this not my younger sister or elder exactly. brother? You know, my family. Mm. And they have their own family, probably married, treat you and your family as complete strangers. It takes effort. It does, though. It mm. takes effort, a lot of effort. And I'll start with the grandparents who put lip service to the things that they should put action to. Mm. You know, compelling. Now I appreciate my mother's compulsion Stance. and reaching out. This mm -hmm. morning, someone had got, my sister-in-law in the village has a health issue with her mom. I got the news this morning. You have to reach out, call her, make sure you say, you know, she sorted out this and this and this and this and this yeah. at home. Call her, say thank you, you know, reach out. She's always emphasizing it. She will not allow one thing slide. And mm. I'm just, as someone was talking, I, I thought I went wandered off and appreciated, you know, somebody reminding mm -hmm. the value of those relationships. I've seen people who take it for granted, who think, mm -hmm. oh, no, this is our daughter-in-law. She cannot do any otherwise. She just has to love and reach out to all of us. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't remember the simple thank yous. You know, when you visit in the neighborhood, visit the person who's keeping it, it together. My younger sister, for instance, now for a second, let me, keeps it together. Yeah. So, yeah, you, you, you raised an important issue, which I would like to, to um, harp on. But let me take this call from Hassan. Good morning, Hassan. Are you there? Good morning. Right. You're alive. Go ahead, please. Look, look you see, um, you people, all of you spoke well. Nima spoke well. Tope spoke well. And all of you, in general, today. Because it's about commercialization of racism. We don't value humanity again. And secondly, about Lima, it's about the information people send to the people. Mm. You see, when you're abroad, it's about making money over there, easy to make money, you know, mm. you change the environment to make money, and people mm. are expecting much more from you. Even in labor there, people in the village expect more from you. But that is very clear. We are losing, we are busy losing our humanity. You see, our presence matters. Let us see ourselves. Let us cohabit. You don't understand. There is, there is a lot of benefits that one will see in Oh, we lost Thank that. Thank you comment. so much. But there's a part that Nima said that struck a chord with me. Mm. We demonize our relationships. Mm. Somebody from the village is the one doing you. Mm. You don't want your family to know this. Mm. You don't want your family. So when things happen, you keep quiet. You don't mm. tell. You, we're not communal anymore. I mean, I, I mean, let me use myself as an example. Like, I'm not saying well, my, my family demonize anybody, but growing up, we did, I, 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 didn't, I didn't know a lot of my cousins. Now, the excuse was that because I came like very, very late. Myself <laughs> and my sister, we came like 12 years after. <laughs> so all the real cousins were all my brothers and their cousins, they, they knew each other, they grew up together. By the time I came, my own siblings were just the, the ones I knew and the, 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 the few cousins I had. But was well, so another group? I said, oh, he's your cousin, that's your uncle. And I'm wondering, who are these people? Mm. We don't know each other. Because I would, I would have loved a situation whereby every, the Akapashan family is so huge. Mm. The Fuja family is so big. We don't know each other. Mm. So it's so sad that we don't Very know sad. each other and we're not able to be there for each other. Mm. Now, I, it's difficult for me to be there for you because... I don't know. I didn't grow up with you. Mm. How can I start coming to come and greet you? Somebody I did not grow up with. So it's that the communal relationship that we should have been built, that we should have built from scratch mm -hmm. was never there. You're not an older person. You say, oh, because she's in London now. Okay, I heard there's a Fuja family in London. No. Hey, call her now. We can send pounds to us. You know, mm -hmm. it's your money <laughs> that is important, not your present, because they don't mm -hmm. know you, but they just know that you live in London and you have money. So that, that, that's part of the problem. But, but, we but demonize talk each about, other. Let's even, that, that very valid, you know, very, very valid. Um, but the idea of you are abroad means you're better off. It's the same way some people feel like you're in Lagos, you're better yeah. off. Yeah. You know, so cool. it's the assumption that because, you, because of where you are, your the life village. is better, and you should take care of those of us that our life is not as good mm. now. But we rise by lifting others. Yeah, and, and it's okay. But sometimes the crab system will come in where, as you're trying to, if you don't successfully stand on that higher level, They'll anybody you, you try helping, <laughs> you end up on down. the ground with them. So we need to also balance things out. I have, I, the few times I travel, the conversation is always of a lot of work, a lot of stress that they are doing over there. In, they, they are in the diaspora, it is cold, you are working, your hands are frozen, it is tough. 
And every time they get a call from Nigeria, it is to beg, okay. it is to mm. complain. It is not a call from compassion. It's not a call to just say, I want to just check up for on you. you. In most cases, once that phone rings or they see the WhatsApp yeah. and it's Nigeria, it is a need. Want. So they are worried about picking that call when it should be, this is home, let me gist with them. How was work today? Let's just change the way we see people living in that space and start showing true love, mm. you know, to them. Let me take this no, call from, uh, you've not spoken <laughs> Okay. I think I have a dinero. Good morning, you're live. Are you there, dinero? Good morning, Good morning, Madam. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, can you hear me clearly? Very clearly. Go ahead. I please. so much appreciate this of you people raising money. Thank I you. I came out of the royal family. And I remember what the other lady, Madam Sophia, I think, what she just mentioned. There will be some women in the clan from their extended relations. They would have been around doing some kind of, you know, you know, house chores and some other stuff that are very, very important. This thing is peculiar of extended relations. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. So, and therein you see some people who have come to, for about a year or something, and they're having something very, very important to do. In the family setting, you understand? The needful, what is expected of you, anybody that comes around, is to just come and have to see these old people, mm -hmm. the head of the house and everybody. Forget whatever you know, pride you have, whatever is in your shoulder. Just put everything that when you come around. Later on, you can show up with the money you have. Mm. Mm. Fantastic. Thank you. Yes, mm. Mariam. Yes, I, I agree that we need to do better with um, building relationships. When Nima was talking, it reminded me of my late uh, mother-in-law. I mean, she was quite old. She couldn't travel up and down. But she would make it a point of duty in the morning after breakfast. She would sit and she'll start calling everyone. <laughs> so I come from a family where the adults always felt the children had to call. You have not called, you have not called. But she did not make it. And my mom said she learned it from, she now learned something from her, where she felt as an adult she was entitled to everyone calling her and making sure she's fine. That she's the one that has the time right yeah. now. She can sit and just make calls. So she tries to do that. And um, it, it, when, when she passed, a lot of people would say, I, was, I, I knew to expect her call at least once every, every day. And wow. she would just, and she would never call you to say, oh, you never call. She would never guilt trip you, mm. just only to um, you know, pray Check for you and bless you. you. And she would do it again the very next day. So that was what she could give mm. at that point in her life. Where she could not visit, she would send money across. You know? But there's some people who don't have this money. I just feel that um, we have cultures here where we hear people say, I can't go back if I don't have this money, you know, mm. I can't go yeah. back. Money is so important that they, are, they cannot even show themselves. They cannot, they can't go to they, the cannot, they cannot even tell, share the problems that they are mm. going through because they don't have the money. They, oh, they, they cannot the, receive the love course. that they need during vulnerable times because mm. they don't have money to give. And that's where we need to see this money thing is good, but, not, but we're not entitled to it. And we should give people the grace the to be able to see what they can, can and what, yeah, and it's not the no, best, best you can give us. More quickly, just because, when you're a parent, maybe because now, maybe very soon now, we don't come and talk to our children, don't they grow? Mm. <laughs> just find out. Ensure that, you know, relationships, if you need your, if you want your children and their children to be together, you are at that point. Mm. And it is not about, no, if you need to show up for each of them, do it. My kids, I know, they know all my cousins. All their cousins from my own side. All my nieces and nephews by first names. So we had a little girl that was born four months after my dad passed. And my son is always like, mm, we call wah, 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 because Rama, we call Rama, just fast, fast. And I noticed that they're not clicking because they've not spent the time that they should with her. I will make that effort. I see how mothers do it. You know, you start, you, you ensure those relationships are kept mm. so that they don't become cousins but strangers. Mm. Imagine that one of them is crying. It's okay to say to the cousin that, please, um, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in need. I need help. And they'll be, you know, they'll get the compassion that is necessary, mm -hmm. not because of anything, but because they know that that's his family. Sure. But sometimes you're family, but you're strangers. Uh -huh. My own first cousins at home, only for let me, a few. Let me go on a very Some I don't know them. Because um, if there's something you said that was well, really important, I think I'd like to go back to. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.
the interesting with us, so as I say that the monizing family members is one thing that we must talk about, maybe yes. another different day, because the whole new topic, as Mariam said during the break, um, one of my weakest points is that I, I'm really bad at following up. Like, I'm just, I just, it's just Definitely. horrible. If, yes. if you want, is there any bad thing it's about me that she doesn't call, doesn't check up on family, she doesn't do, mm. that I know. I learned it's that my, in defense. It's a terrible thing that I do, that I try to fuck, but I have aunties who call me. In fact, it's really after my mother died. Many of them call me consistently. After a while, oh, because obviously this guy is not returning our calls and they cannot be obvious. I understand that. But you see, because I didn't I didn't really have that going. I didn't I right. nobody ever taught it was I was never taught. And I like the idea that said your mom mm. intentionally mm. remind mm. the children, mm. call this person, call that person, because she was also raising you that way. I didn't grow up with any of those call blessing in check of this. Mm. I never had that. So it took a, it, it, it takes a lot out of me yeah. to remember to call somebody there and check up guess, on somebody yeah. else. It, and a, it's a bad bad habit. Yeah, there was a guest we have, I think it was Mrs. Attila. I can't remember. And she said something. We were complaining about not, yes. not keeping said it. Come around. She says, it's okay. You are at the stage of your lives where, you know, you're waking up, you're getting children to school, you're hustling to make ends meet. We understand that's the older ones. You get to the stage where you will have the time to do this. And so for me, I'll be, I'm asking for grace from the older members of my family. Give me this grace. That at this period, I'm so focused on yeah. raising these children. Sometimes you would have planned to reach out, and then it's the end of the day. And it's exactly. too late to make a call. And you're like, okay, I'll try tomorrow. And before you know it, time has passed. I'm not excusing myself totally. I need yes. to do better. But also, I hope that you give us grace. Exactly. Thank you very much. Because she, I remember that what she said. She, Ms. Attila said, just Ms. Attila actually. Yeah. She said that Attila. your friends will even find each other. When mm. you get to a certain age, all of you that Mr. So you, you, you that you're having find, lunch with your friends now. Yeah. <laughs> you find yeah. your, they will come around. Mm. But there's this phase in your life where you're just focusing on family. Mm -hmm. But eventually you, you growing, find yourselves and then you're growing. Yeah, sometimes, but you really grow apart, really. Yeah. So sometimes yeah. you find yourself. You find yourself. There's another one yeah. I noticed is that you know because you're a woman and you grew up with your own family you're closer you pick your kids closer to your, your family. Own family you deliberate about that but you can't do so much for your husband's family so they're strangers to the other side yeah. mm. and you're in the middle and you say your family you know growing up i miss that and i'm meeting some of my cousins from my dad's side that i'm thinking wow amazing people mm -hmm. yeah. you know these people are really really out mm. there you want to really be related mm. so i'm deliberately balancing both sides but i see my Kids to miss, they don't know their cousins. Yeah. Those sides. On yeah. the other side. Mm. And it seems like I'm doing so much here. Sometimes it, it gives me guilt. Sometimes, you know, mm. I, I, so I make the effort also to take them as much as they as so, allow. I'm, I'm, as an only child, it's always a bit different from, from my own perspective. It's, I'm of you, I'm in that space <laughs> where I'm like, I don't have, yes, I don't have siblings. And I, the, there was, I, I have cousins and I have one that I'm really close to, and my kids know their little. Yeah. Second cousin, but there was a time in my relationship with my my in-laws that it was there was a bit of tension, and my husband would just be like, "I'm going to talk to my brother. You don't we, you, you, we don't need to go to the house." And even though there was tension, I deliberately mm. took myself and the kids there, and I would feel the tension, and I'll say, "My children must know their cousins, cousins. because oh, that's the only family in Lagos that they have. So they cannot be we cannot be in Lagos together." And I say, "Because there's a bit of tension, they will know themselves. We will not eat before going. We will eat at home before going there." But that season had passed, has passed now, and now yeah, we have friends. an amazing relationship. Because we would have lost an opportunity mm. if. So right now, my sister-in-law would tell, tell people around that if you know what up where that, people, people, people judge me, oh, but up where, if you know, we are best That's pals okay. now. But we went through that season that where is. it looked like it was tough, and I yeah. think that people need to yeah. give it, yeah. give it that yeah. time, yeah. and over time, you'll get over it. My father passed, I think, or my mother passed. One of my aunties, I think, Auntie PC Akabasha, was saying that you need to let me develop a WhatsApp group. You know, because if, if I say she, she, she attempts to do a WhatsApp group, Akabasha, right? <laughs> you will you, you, be full. You will be full. There are so many of us. I don't know how mm. Akokia children do 1,000 messages a day. I just don't know. One of us is running for House of Reps. In fact, my uncle is running for House of Reps in my constituency at home. And his picture is on the WhatsApp group, but the 1,000 messages, I know if you keep up. I, <laughs> well, I, think, I think we have to wrap up soon, but I think really, Facebook group what, well. what this conversation is driving us to is that all of us are guilty, mm -hmm. one way or the other, mm. not keeping up with family. And because when we don't do that, so when important functions, maybe somebody passes on, or somebody's getting married, it's easier to choose the commercial part of it, we just send mm -hmm. money, because you're not close to them. Yeah. But the real value we're missing is being there. 
is being there, being part of family. But people also say, ah, hey, I'm not going to go village people. I will now go and show myself because people are dying. We go to we go to the village, I go and do something. You know? So that 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 demonizing part, we have to say a whole different topic for a different day. Mm -hmm. Why do we demonize ourselves? Because that's why. Many of us don't go to go and meet family. Let, let them not know what I'm doing, you know. Mm -hmm. Make them not come and shine mm -hmm. their eye on mm -hmm. my own small nuclear family. You know, that's the mentality. So there's their pros and cons. Who's a bit real? Which family are you looking for? Family yeah. too, where <laughs> you don't want to look for any family. We have Stay. Our love. love. So, but either way, we must show love. Mm. You we must, must show love because must. we need each other. And nothing really sticks more than family. Family is the strongest bond. Yeah. And there are some times where when push comes to shove. That's I mean, I remember when my mother was, 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 was in a really bad state. And the only thing that gave me joy was that every one of us around us were her kids. Mm -hmm. Like, we, though, her children, the, Lord, the closest people came. to her, the people that meant the world to her were around her. That, for me, was, it was more powerful that Momsi experienced that mm -hmm. before she took her last breath. That, so it's family at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's all we can take on today's show. Have a great day. We'll see you... Tomorrow. Tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs>